I'm excited to introduce the Intel Gaudi 3 AI Accelerator for the first time. So you ready? Intel Gaudi 3. <laughs> Huge advancements in generative AI, building on the pr proven performance of Gaudi 2, delivering 4x the AI compute with BF16, 2x with FP8, uh, 2x the networking bandwidth, 1.5x the memory bandwidth for massive scale out, significant leap in performance for AI uh, training, popular LLMs, multi model support, and Intel Gaudi 3 is architected from the ground up for efficient large-scale AI computing, supporting both scale-up and scale-out uh, configurations. Gaudi 3 is great on benchmarks versus the H100 on top Open Llama models, 50% faster on time to train, 50% better on inferencing, 40% better on inference power efficiency. A scalable solution with Gaudi 3 using industry standard Ethernet, like we talked about uh, before, scaling performance from one socket to a eight accelerator UBB, a single node, up to thousands of nodes and racks. And nearly all of the Gen AI developments today are moving to higher level environments, PyTorch frameworks, and other community models from Hugging Face. Industry is quickly moving away from proprietary CUDA models, literally a few lines of code, and you're able to be up and running with industry fa standard frameworks on power performant, efficient Gaudi infrastructure. Now, let's talk a little bit more about availability and a bit nerdier together. Intel Gaudi 3 is available to OEMs starting this quarter of uh, this year. Three different industry standard uh, form factors. The accelerator card that I was just showing off here to you. We're also adding to the uh, Gaudi family a PCIe card. And finally, our universal baseboard. Man, look at this big boy. Yeah, <laughs> I always bring Big Brother along with me. And, uh, you know, with it, you know, that range of solutions and here, you know, up to 14.6 FP8 petaflops, greater than a terabyte of HBM3E, 192 native 200 gigabit Ethernet uh, connections in this uh, big boy. And with our first Gaudi uh, PCIe card, extraordinary compute density, the same capabilities as the mezzanine card, giving our customers great flexibility, 1.8 petaflops of FP8 capabilities, 128 gigabytes of uh, uh, memory in 600 watt TDP, making it an easy adjunct to a Xeon deployment, being able to deliver industry standard infrastructure into your data center. And Gaudi 3 eliminates vendor lock-in with standard networking solutions in your data centers, in your cloud, and with open software environments. Best of all, best of all, you ready? Huge TCO advantages for your deployment. This is a winning solution. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Gaudi 3 generation. And I'm very happy to announce the next generation of Xeon, Xeon 6 processors, the new brand for our next generation of both efficient core and performance core solution, Xeon 6. And with the rapid rise in computing requirements and the immense data sets that we're working with, workloads are driving trade-offs for performance, efficiency, and density. And in return, more demand for CPUs and cores that deliver better performance uh, per watt. For the first time, our Xeon 6 with eCore uniquely addressing these uh, challenges. And this is our first volume part on Intel 3 that we'll be bringing uh, into the marketplace. And super excited, so it's coming along very well and we'll be moving Sierra Forest into production this quarter. And we're seeing this uh, ability to deliver up to 2.7x better rack density, 2.5x performance per watt improvements. Well, let's just take an example of a telco server deployment where uh, they might have uh, 200 racks using second gen Z on for their uh, infrastructure for their telco environment. With Xeon 6 with E cores, we can reduce that down to just 72 racks. Same performance, same capabilities, and 
less management, less networking, less things to upgrade, less things to be supporting the environment. And this results in over one megawatts of power savings in a tradi traditional data center, or 1,300 Arizona homes you know, now have energy sources available to them. Simply put, it frees up energy capacity, builds TCO efficiency, improves physical space that enables our next generation Gen AI and P core solutions into the marketplace. Well, the big brother of Sierra Forest is our Xeon Gen 6 processor, formerly known as Granite Rapids with P cores. And of course, right, we have one of those wafers here too. What a surprise, right? And here's our Granite uh, Rapids uh, Intel 3 wafer, right, which will be uh, launching shortly after the Sierra Forest product, uh, and uh, we're quite excited to be ramping this into the marketplace this year, also on the Intel 3 process uh, technology. So it's sort of like twins, right? <laughs> Over 60% of computing is now done in the cloud or on some cloud embodiments, but the vast majority of data is still on-prem. And indications are that 66% of that data is unused, and 90% of the unstructured data is unused. What a value unlock. And this idea of LLMs and RAG gives us extraordinary opportunity to unlock this hidden asset that you and your businesses aren't being able to leverage and operate on today. And Xeon is clearly a tremendous machine for running these RAG environments and making LLMs more effective and efficient on your data. Xeon is not only able to be your database front end, but increasingly, it's able to run the LLMs as well. No new management, no new networking, no new security models, no new things to learn, no proprietary networking. It just works on the industry standards, eons that you know and love. With that, let me introduce you to the next star of the Gen AI show, the Xeon 6 P-Core or Granite Rapids that we were looking over. So here's my Granite Rapids, quite excited for this baby coming into the marketplace this year. But let's get started by looking at four different text streaming uh, services that are running on three generations of Xeon. And over here, right, we have two generations of Gen 4, right, we have Gen 5, and then Xeon 6 here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take one common Llama 2 70B, and in our first two systems, we're going to write a haiku about Intel AI solutions. And this one's going to be using uh, uh, FP16, and this one's going to be using the 4-bit that we just described. So let's kick these off, and we're going to see the comparison of just moving to the 4-bit format on the same generation of hardware. So we'll get this kicked off. Write a haiku about Intel AI solutions. OK, sure. And uh, quickly running through it. And we see over here, 170 milliseconds of latency and not quite done over here yet. We're getting to it shortly here. And uh, what you'll see is about a 3x improvement in the latency just as we move to the modern data types for the FP4. OK, now let's go from Gen 4 to Gen 5, and we're going to run the same query, and we'll see how long it takes us on a Gen 5 machine. And uh, we'll have this guy run through here. So here's a Kaiku about Intel AI software solutions. And we're now at 150 milliseconds, or about a 3x reduction as we went from Gen 4 to Gen 5. What do you think? Pretty good? And that is really good. But most would say 100 milliseconds is sort of the threshold. What do you think? Can we get below 100 milliseconds? Maybe. Let's give it a try. And we'll kick this baby off here. If I hit the Enter versus the Shift key. And over here, we'll quickly see that's uh, 82 milliseconds. Literally across three generations of Xeon, taking advantage of our latest innovations on Granite Rapids, Monument Creek memory, the highest performance DRAM you know, memory, combining that with FP4, you know, model MXFP4 capabilities, brings us clearly in range where I can now run very hefty models right on the Xeon platform. From fourth gen Xeon with 16 bits up to today, uh, less than 100 milliseconds, 6.4x improvement from Gen 4 to Xeon 6. Again, without major upgrades, just run it in your data centers. This is, you know, Llama 270B parameters, no expensive proprietary stuff, crap, whatever, entering your data center. And with that, 
we see them turning to models like Gaudi. And Intel Gaudi's price performance advantages lie in three fundamental domains. First, choice. People want an alternative, right? <laughs> Open software approach and investments and providing time to market available lower TCO solutions. And Gaudi is the only benchmark alternative to the NVIDIA H100 for training LLMs. And with bringing Xeon and Gaudi together, you know, it really is an AI system. But then how do I scale those systems in my data centers? And that's where the networking fabric comes to play. And while there's some proprietary solutions available, we also see that the Ultra Ethernet Consortium and the work that we're driving is standing up to fill the scale up and scale out networking domain. And through UEC, Intel is revolutionizing building on Ethernet networking for AI fabrics for the future. And we'll be introducing an array of AI-optimized Ethernet solutions. This lineup will include cutting-edge AI NIC cards that we'll be delivering, standard NIC solutions. It will also include AI chiplets that will enable for our customers and partners in Intel Foundry. It will also include soft and hard IP through Intel Foundry. And it's building on and leveraging the work that we've done, integrating it fully into our Gaudi solutions as well. A range of soft and hard reference designs for AI connectivity, because we don't need proprietary networking for our AI solutions for the future. What do you think? Is that a winner? <laughs> but should the AI happen in the cloud or at the edge? And I call it the three laws, the laws of economics, the laws of physics, and the laws of the land. Economics, it's simply too expensive to bring your data back to the cloud. It gives you better cost control. Bandwidth is the most expensive resource that you have. And cloud is the most expensive compute that you have in the fleet. So the laws of economics, move it to the edge. But second is the laws of the physics, as I like to say. And how many of you have changed the speed of light this week? What's the round trip requirement? What's the user interface expectations for instantaneous response? Or how fast does the robotic arm need a response? If it's 20 milliseconds, you can't 200 millisecond round trip to the cloud. The laws of physics draw you to the edge. And hey, we're, we're pretty profound technologists, but we ain't changing the speed of light. But maybe the third is the most powerful, the laws of the land. And we often need to keep data on-prem for privacy, regulatory, security reasons. And data laws have become increasingly diverse and restrictive by regions across the world. And every nation has some form of GDPR, and this volume of data to tap in at the edge is simply staggering. So the three laws. And as the edge becomes increasingly important, it's going to become, we believe, the dominant AI workload. Research indicates that by 2026, 50% of edge computing deployments will involve machine learning and AI, compared to just 5% today. A killer use case. Where before competitors shipped their first chips, we're launching our second. Lunar Lake, 3x the AI performance. This little marble has over 100 platform tops, 45 NPU tops alone. And before others get started, we're on to the second generation. The third generation's in fab, because we're going to drive the AI PC category to every fingertip of your users and your customers. And just like with Wi-Fi, after you've started to use an AI PC, you can't imagine not. What do you mean? You don't have a Wi-Fi connection? What's the matter with you? Get rid of this piece of trash. AI will be enabling every business critical worker, automating, streamlining, collaborating, new insights. Everything I've talked about today, it's not going to happen overnight. But it's also not going to take long. You know, we see this enterprise AI transformation happening right around us today. But we see it unfolding in three different stages. First, the age of the AI co-pilot. We expect productivity improvements of maybe 25% from those kind of capabilities. But the second age is nigh upon us, the age of agents, where the AI automates entire workflows. And think about this like an autonomous car. I let go of the wheel. 
and it's doing it for me. The age of AI agents is nigh upon us, and we expect that enterprises will develop the main specific models, and agents will be programmed to act autonomously through their periods, and check out agents, and compliance, and customer service, automatically partnering with us, seven by 24. And with this, just being able to unlock next phases of productivity. But the third age, the age of functions, where agents start to interact with other agents and literally entire departments become AI automated solutions. And maybe we'll have the age of the first one person billion dollar company as we look to it, securely unlocking the world's data that's still held inside of these databases on-prem that's not being leveraged today. And how do we you know, bring this to every portion of our business operations? As you saw, I need to transform my manufacturing in our fabs. We need to be 10x better because the people I'm competing with, they have lower cost of labor. We have to out-innovate them using AI to drive our fabs and manufacturing. And each one of you need to do the same for your businesses as well where the technology is gaining cognitive capabilities as strong as humans in different domains. And we expect that we need not a little bit more computing power, but 10,000 times more computing power for this generation and achieving full AGI capabilities literally this decade. And as stewards of Moore's Law, we're going to relentlessly pursue more power-efficient computing. Because all of this that we've talked about today, everything we've talked about, is made possible by the power of silicon. As I said at the start, every company is going to become an AI company. Together, we'll unleash the power of your data. We're going to accelerate your productivity. We're going to enable your workforce. We're going to vastly improve the ROI of your technology investments, all while making it more sustainable and secure. Intel, we were made for moments like this. Together with all of you, we're going to change the world again. Thank you.